The Sundarbans is the world's largest river delta and one of the areas most vulnerable to global warming. For filmmaker and environmentalist Pradeep Saha, it provides a glimpse of what's in store for our planet. This is uh, one of the islands which is disappearing at a very fast rate, almost become half in the last 25 years. Every month I come, I land in a different place because the, the last place I landed, is, it's gone. Islands are often appearing and disappearing in a delta, but the erosion of Goramara Island has been accelerated by sea level rise. Barriers are built to protect the islanders from the encroaching tide. This place keeps on, keeps on changing. Uh, last time I came, there was not this embankment. The front embankment is almost gone, so it's the second line of defense they've already created. I mean, that's the way it goes constantly, one after another. And they just keep building walls to keep out yeah, the sea. Uh, yeah, just go move in, move in. This was not there before. This is a new one. There are no roads here, and apart from some solar panels, there's no electricity. The islanders on Garamara haven't contributed to global warming. The only way to get around is by foot or on a cycle rickshaw. Pradip is going to the western part of the island, where he saw waves washing into homes on his last visit. Oh! What's happened? It's gone, the house is gone. Just one wall. That, that house was here when you yeah. were here last? Yeah, yeah. What the tide hadn't taken away was destroyed by a cyclone a few months ago. It's completely, I can't recognize. I mean, I came here uh, just two months ago. Climate scientists attribute the increasing frequency and intensity of cyclones here to global warming. Hmm. This woman used to live in the house Pradip wanted to show me. Hmm. This is your house right behind you. Are you uh, are you worried about what might happen if the sea gets any further? Mm. We've just been told that a large chunk of land on the north coast fell into the sea yesterday. Sir, 
তিন বার ঘর লাগিয়েছি হ্যাঁ তিন বার ঘর এই ঘর ছিল আগে ওনাদের ঘর আমাদের ঘর হয় পাশাপাশি একদম সেই মধ্যে আছে ওই যে ওই ডিঙ্গি গুলো আরো ধারে ছিল How long do you think it will take the sea to reach your homes এই বাঁধের পরে তো একটা বাঁধ এই তো বাড়ি পাঁচ সাত বছরের ভিতরে চলে যাবে Working out an exact chain of cause and effect for climate change is always difficult. The erosion of these islands is also blamed on disturbance to the river mud caused by passing ships and a lack of proper dredging by local port authorities. But older residents agree with scientists that the recent erosion isn't natural. নদী থাকলে তার ভাঙন থাকবে শরীর থাকলে তার সুস্থ অসুস্থ থাকবে তবে অপেক্ষাকৃত আগে আসতে যখন পঞ্চাশ বছর আগে যে ভাঙন ছিল বর্তমান সেটা ব্যাপক আকার ধারণ করেছে এখন সেই দ্বীপ ভাঙতে ভাঙতে একটা সীমিত জায়গায় এসে গেছে অস্থায়ী আমরা হয়ে গেছি হয়তো জানি না এভাবে যদি ভাঙন চলে হয়তো আর দশ বিশ বছরের মধ্যেই এই দ্বীপ Environmentalist Pradeep Saha says India should brace itself for social unrest. Now, if you have to move these people at some point, there is no place, there is not an inch left. All I know that it's going to be pretty violent because nobody is going to give up anything and uh, you know a family will have to do whatever they have to do to uh, feed the family so uh, people will do whatever they have to do. At the same time that India suffers from global warming, it's also, increasingly, making the problem worse. Years of record economic growth mean India's greenhouse gas emissions have increased dramatically and are now coming in for scrutiny at climate change negotiations. I mean, if there are countries which are saying India is the problem, uh, let us see if India is the problem. You know, you have the United States of America, which has something like 20% of the global emissions in the world. Uh, you have Europe, which probably counts for another 20-25% of the global emissions. And what is India with a billion plus population? Only 4% of the global emissions. But in India is still the fourth biggest emitter. In well, I mean, you know, this ranking is, is a bit misleading, isn't it? I mean, look at the gap between between uh, uh, number one, number two, and number three, or, or number four. Today, even in large parts of rural India, the trappings of middle-class life and the power to pollute are finally within reach. This brand new Maruti Omni has been sent out by a local showroom to entice villagers with the comfort and convenience of transport on four wheels. Maruti is the country's largest car maker. Its rural sales have more than tripled in the past few years. आदमी जब शुरू शुरू में जब था दस साल पहले आज माने चले तो साइकिल लेना भी व्यक्ति के लिए बहुत बड़ी बात थी अब मार्केट में उसका टू व्हीलर आया धीरे धीरे टू व्हीलर आज देखेंगे हर व्यक्ति के पास टू व्हीलर मिलेगी उसका तब फोर व्हीलर का जो समय आया फोर व्हीलर के कारण जैसा मार्केट में जो कस्टमर मेहनत किसान लोग भी जो थे पहले किसानों के लिए भी एक सपना था कि हमें मारुति लेना है आज हर किसान के पास मारुति मतलब चाह रहा तो ले मतलब उसमें हो रही है अच्छा इंटीरियर हो गया अपना और इंटीरियर और मतलब बॉडी ये चेंज काफ़ी अंदर है जापानी स्टाइल में उसको मतलब सा लुक दिया हुआ है गाड़ी का क्या सुंदर दिखती है वो This farmer has decided to buy a car for his daughter's dowry for an upwardly mobile couple two wheels just won't do वो पढ़े लिखी लड़की भी बालक भी ये अनुभव नहीं है जब देर एजुकेटेड देवार की कार क्यों फिर मोटरसाइकिल क्यों नहीं नहीं मोटरसाइकिल क्यों भी पढ़े लिखे हैं ज़्यादा पढ़े लिखे हैं कॉलेज ये सीनियर हो गए मतलब हाँ इसलिए दे रहा है
His daughter doesn't have a driver's license and he's only got a tractor license, but this doesn't seem to pose any obstacle. Are there a lot of people driving cars that don't have a driving license? Yes, 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 yes! <laughs> India, along with other developing nations, has always been exempt from international agreements to cut emissions. The idea was that poor countries needed time to catch up to rich ones. But in the lead up to Copenhagen, the United States and Australia have suggested that large developing nations also need to set clear targets for reducing the future growth of emissions. Which is like, don't have any time. Like, this is like, like, no, no, no. At a climate change summit in New Delhi last month, I found America's deputy special envoy for climate change, Jonathan Pershing, diplomatically pushing for commitments from India. What does the United States want to see from India? The United States would like to see the implementation of the aggressive programs and policies that India has put into place. And the US believes that it is most effective if countries, including India, including China, uh, including Brazil, major economies can take Take these domestic actions and reflect them internationally. Do you want to see and commitments? There should be a monitoring and a reporting and a verification of those, and that those reflect the actions that countries take domestically and are part of an international deal. So if there aren't, that's good. If Thanks if there so much, guys. Commitments, that's it. Does that mean there's no deal? But many government officials here are outraged that the US is lecturing India on its responsibilities. Climate change is taking place not because of India's current emissions. Climate change is taking place because of a huge amount of accumulated carbon emissions in the atmosphere which has been going on for the last 200 years. Who's responsible for that? Of course. But then, when... so if you are going to then reduce everything down to what the current level of emissions is and then say, you know, it is because India is standing in the way by not, re not uh, agreeing to any, any emission reduction targets and this is why the negotiations are going to fail, you are looking for scapegoats, you are looking for escape routes. India is not responsible. Influential environmentalists here are also outraged by what they see as an attempt by rich countries to hobble the growth of poor ones. The biggest frustration for people like us is that you're seeing a shifting of goalposts constantly. When we went to... Veteran activist Sunita Narain is part of the Prime Minister's Council on Climate Change. The effort is to try and blur the difference between what was done in the past and therefore the responsibility of countries to reduce and what will be done in the future, which is countries like China, countries like India, which will have to emit for their own development. And I think that to me is not just frustrating, it is immoral obviously, but it is also unacceptable because we have to understand no country will accept the freezing of inequity in the world. I hope that all of you in the time that Mr. Sharma and I have spoken. Environment Minister Jairam Ramesh shocked many here last month when he suggested India should show greater flexibility in negotiations. The worst thing that is happening in this country today is the Western media which is playing out this image of India being the naysayer, of India being the obstruction. And I think that really has meant that the Indian politicians today are prepared to go out and appease, I believe, the American and the Australian position, which is not good for the planet. So you're actually concerned that the Indian government could buckle in the face of this pressure? I think it could buckle in the face of extreme pressure and it could buckle so that it actually agreed to a bad deal in Copenhagen. India says it's already doing a lot to combat global warming and many renewable energy schemes are planned, ranging from planting forests to building the world's biggest solar farm. 
But tens of millions of village women cook every day over smoky fires that pollute the atmosphere and shorten their lives. Here in Uttar Pradesh, a project is being trialled that aims to save the environment and lives by improving the way people cook. The main cause of global warming is CO2 emissions, but the soot in the smoke, black carbon, also plays an important role. We have to cut down CO2 emissions. That blanket is thickening. We have lost the privilege of doing one thing. Climate scientist Dr. Veerabhadran Ramanathan says that while CO2 lingers in the atmosphere for years, black carbon from soot and diesel emissions only stays a few weeks. Stopping the smoke could therefore make a big difference in the short term. Because my own estimates suggest reducing one ton of black carbon emission will have the same effect of mitigating climate warming as reducing 1,000 tons of carbon dioxide. So it's a huge leverage here. The village of Kairatpur is becoming a laboratory where scientists can study what happens when black carbon emissions are reduced. 350 families are receiving new stoves that cook more efficiently and produce less smoke. Importantly, the villagers will still burn the same fuel, so their food will taste the same. But the solar-powered fan will help it burn better and capture the carbon. Black carbon from diesel is also a big problem in other countries like the US. But in India, the soot and diesel emissions do more damage accelerating the retreat of the Himalayan glaciers by as much as 50%. Dr. Ramanathan wanted to be handing out thousands of stoves by now, but so far he's only been able to raise funds to cover this one village. I have to remain optimistic, and I know I'm going to get the funds, and I know we're going to do this 10,000 households in a few years' time. Maybe I'm slowed down by a year or two, but it'll happen. Does the planet have time for this? That's the thing which, you know, uh, really worries me. I s spend sleepless nights on it. We don't have time. India knows only too well the cost of not acting now. It stands to lose a lot more than most rich countries. But there are powerful voices here arguing that this is not the time for compromise. We will not have a deal in Copenhagen just to appease the polluting nations of the world, which is Australia and the US, which are pushing the world towards an agreement which is going to be bad for climate, which is going to be bad for the world. So is no deal better than that? Absolutely, because for too long the world has been blackmailed by countries like Australia and the United States saying, we will walk out if you don't give us what we want and we want to keep polluting. I think it's time that the world stood up to the bullies of the world. It's time that the world told Australia and the US that you are responsible for the no deal. Do not put the blame on countries like India. For the people of the Sundarbans Delta, it's already too late for blame. 
Every day, these women shore up their fragile mud homes, knowing the tide will inevitably carry them away.